and a very significant point which I want to tell you. You know, some people think today, they say we want to follow the mazhab and the practice of those who are now living in Saudi Arabia and Makkah and Medina because Islam originated from there. Islam originated from there but 1500 years before. <laughs> Not from the hands of the present people. <laughs> These were the days when someone could, took, could take into consideration the origin, the place of origin of Islam. These were the days, the early centuries of Islam, when this question was more appropriate to be taken into consideration. He went to Makkah <coughs> and Hijaz and Sham everywhere. But Imam Azam Abu Hani, but Imam Bukhari himself says, "The Khalto ila Sham wa Misr wal Jazira marratain." He says, "I went to Sham, Syria, for collection of ahadis, and to Egypt and Al Jazira. Al Jazira." In fact, if you say now is a portion, is a part, a territory which comes in between Syria, Iraq and Turkey. The whole land between these, this is Al Jazeera. It was prolonged between Dajla and Farat. So he says, I went to Syria, I went to Egypt, I went to Jazeera, Marratain, two times. The number of his visits indicate the number of hadith which he could receive from there. The knowledge of hadith, what, how much was available in that land. This in the number of visits indicates this reality. Then he says, Wa ilal basra arba marat. Ilal basra arba marat. This is the place of Imam Hassan Basri. Imam Hassan Al Basri, the great Tabi, the student and disciple of Sayyidina Ali Al Murtada, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he is the Shaykh of Turuk, a Sufiya. And he played in the lab of Ummul Mu'mineen, Umm Salma radiallahu ta'ala anha, Imam Hassan al-Basri. He played with Sayyidina Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain. He was born in the days of Sayyidina Umar. His mother used to work in the house of Ummul Mu'mineen, Umm Salma radiallahu ta'ala anha. And he was born there when he was small, two months, three months, six months, four months, up to two years. He stayed there up to 14, 15 years. So he used to take him to the house of Holy Prophet وسلم, to Ahlul Bayt. Bayt al Nabuwa. Umm al Mu'mineen, Umm Salma radiallahu ta'ala anha. Whenever he cried, she took her, him in her lab. So he got brought up in the lab of Umm al Mu'mineen. And he is the one who became the founder of At Tariqah, wa Suluk, wa Tasawwuf in the Umm of Holy Prophet. He became the fountain of tasawwuf and a ruhiya. So, he says that I went to Basra four times. <laughs> and I stayed in Hijaz. It means in Makkah, Muazzama and Madina al-Munawwara six years. He stayed in Haraman for six years. And then a very significant and notable, noticeable remarks which he has given. Then he says, Wala uhsi, kam dakhaltu ila al kufa wa Baghdad ma al muhaddisin. And this is countless my visits to Baghdad and Kufa. The number of my visits is countless. I can't count how many times I visited. Kufa and Baghdad.
So what is the significance, relevance of Kufa? Kufa is the place of Imam Azam Abu Hanifa, where he was born. So Imam Bukhari goes countless times to Kufa and Baghdad to receive the hadith from there. And the one Abu Hanifa who was born over there, who lived over there, right from 80 to 150 and died in Baghdad. Imam Bukhari says that my number of visits to Kufa and Baghdad is countless. I just he kept on going throughout my life again and again repeatedly to receive as much knowledge of hadith from these two cities as I could. And somebody thinks today that Imam Abu Hanifa who was the man from Kufa and Baghdad, he couldn't receive so, so much knowledge of hadith from their city. He is going just to these two cities to receive the maximum knowledge of hadith over there. Why he went to Kufa? Let me tell this thing too, so many times. That Kufa had become the military army center and Kent army center of the companions and Sahaba and Islam in the days of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And then it had become the capital of Islam, Darul Khilafah, in the days of Sayyidina Ali. And it is written in the books that over 1500 companions shifted from Haraman to Kufa. 1500 companions, Sahaba, they lived in Kufa. I think this was the maximum number of companions who ever lived in a city in the whole world. They left Makkah al muazzama they left Medina al munawwara because originally companions, most of them, they belonged to Haraman. When these lands were captured, and Sayyidina Farooq Umar, he concentrated on Kufa because this was the headquarter for Persia, for Syria, and closer to the Byzantine area. And the Haraman Sharifan was quite far from there. So this became virtually the capital of Islamic world, which was touching the all territories around. It became the universal capital of Islam. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was appointed there as the chief justice. And companions started shifting there, migrating there. And the number of the migrants of the companions raised up to 1500 who lived in the city of Kufa. And Imam Ibn Siri, a great Tabi, says that I visited their Kufa and I saw 4,000 Tabi'in. They had their own sittings and delivering the knowledge of Hadith to the people. 4,000 Tabi'in. They were transmitting a Hadith of Holy Prophet. So virtually the Kufa had become the biggest center of the Hadith of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The biggest center. The largest gathering of Sahaba and Tabi'in and the scholars and authorities of Hadith, they were found in Kufa. This was the place where Imam Abu Hanifa opened his eyes, where he was born. Where did he receive the knowledge of Hadith from? And he compiled in the light of these Hadith, Al-Fiqh Al-Hanafi.